Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another uh, world building bonus episode. Uh, I'm joined again by Eden. How's it going? Hello, I'm pretty good. Cool. Um, today, uh, well actually today and in two weeks time we are going to be doing um, two separate world building episodes tied in to the current ongoing community challenge uh, Summer Camp 2019 on uh, World Anvil. Uh, those of you who haven't heard of World Anvil, it's a really cool site um, for sort of uh, homebrewing your own kind of setting and world. It's used by dungeon masters, authors, all kinds of people. And um, basically you can kind of make your own sort of, I don't know, how would you describe it? It's kind of like you can make your own kind of Wikipedia for your for your world sort of thing. Yeah, basically <laughs> you can make a big repository of all the information that anybody might want to know about locations, characters, historical events. And yeah, it's searchable like a wiki. It's incredibly detailed. Mm. And uh, and tied into that, we've been, well, we've been using it, I've been using it for quite a while. Um, but whenever we play D and D on the podcast, we do it uh, in our own homebrew setting of Valana. Um, those of you who've heard these world building episodes, this won't be news to. But um, you know, for those of you new, welcome along. <laughs> um, so the general gist of this summer camp 2019 challenge is it's uh, there's 30 days in July, so. There's a big long list of 30 separate world building prompts to sort of come up with new things, write new articles for your world about. So um, we've been kind of taking part in that um, just in general as a, as a participant. And we thought what we'd do today as part of this episode is we'd kind of pick a couple of these, uh, a couple of these prompts, just sort of talk them out. And uh, then I can go away and finalize an article on each of them. <laughs> um, so... There's a quite wide variety of articles here, uh, well, potential articles at least. Um, mm -hmm. have, have any kind of jumped out at you and caught your sort of eye straight away, Eden? Well, there's, there's the potential for a little bit of, I don't know, I, I was about to say slightly lazy crossover. I guess it is, potentially. <laughs> hey, look, um, well, we, make, we make no bones about being a little bit lazy when it comes to certain things, I think. Yeah. I think if it works, it works. And basically what I was thinking was uh, one of them, one of the prompts is to uh, write about, uh, sorry, describe a settlement that is famous or infamous for its industrial activities. Mm. And we came up when we were chatting last time with the town of Riftview. We did. Which yeah. was our gemstone mining village town out in the mountains that kind of, we didn't put a firm finger on it, but we did speculate a bit on kind of like, is this place potentially a bit seedy because the only things that the, the only industry that's possible up there is this mining stuff. So mm. whoever owns the mine owns the society as it were surrounding the place. A little bit of a kind of like a robber baron thing going on and that, and it's sort of like people come up looking to uh, kind of make their fortune in the mines. And they're basically like, well, if you want to mine, you've got to work for me, by the way, here's, here's a terrible rate of pay, take it or leave it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And you get your, Pot for, you get your uh, cup of stew or whatever from the communal pot at the end of the day, but that's about it because nobody's growing anything in town. So mm. you get the food where you get the food, you get the water where you get the water, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, right up in the mountain sort of thing of like, and then it's sort of like can the guy the the sort of owner and his lackeys control the uh, the food supply, they control the you know control everything sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm trying to think what the modern equivalent would be. There's, there's kind of like I've heard stories of uh, oil barons and what have you that used to run things a bit like that. I mean, it's probably not even the modern equivalent. It's probably a hundred years old. Yeah. About that <laughs> cliche, but that that thing of like the dream of rich and riches and what have you, and then the reality of you're going to die young and probably at the end of a mine shaft or something terrible like that. Mm, yeah, totally. I mean, I, yeah, I, I like this as an idea of like one to base it on then. Um, Partly because we've already come up with it. <laughs> it's just a case of writing the article. But I think we can flesh it out a little bit more. Um, so uh, we've got our geographical location. Uh, those who want to find uh, our page, you can go to... I, know, I should find probably say the actual full homepage uh, address. Uh, you can go to worldanvil.com uh, slash w slash valana dash pretending with dice. Um, it's not too complicated. I might actually. Well, I'm gonna. I'm 100 gonna be linking on our Twitter um, to this. So if you oh, find if, us on if there, if you Google um, "pretending with dice" and "world anvil," that will get you there. Oh well, that's helpful as well. Yeah, that's, a, that's way easier than what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a bunch of stuff to type into your uh, browser. Um, but yeah, you can find scrolling down. You can find on there our map. So that is very useful for for this. Now, Riftview. Um, 
see we've already got a name for it <laughs> mm. um is up sort of to the towards the the kind of eastern edge like in the the northeast of the um the kind of still green kind of lands um i haven't got a name for the sort of the rift that it's kind of looking over mm -hmm. um so that's kind of maybe something we can sort of think of um well <laughs> just on that basis then another one of the writing prompts is uh, an in describing an inhospitable region hmm so the rift well, possibly we, near, nearby we've got the auric <laughs> wastes but it looks like you've built a kind of like a, a mountainous kind of barrier so that this rift represents like it's not part of the auric wastes potentially like well, what were you thinking a little bit like? i was thinking maybe the rift is um, not quite as bad as the waste. In it's sort of a little bit kind of sheltered just by its own kind of geography. Like it's still mm -hmm. kind of sort of blasted and kind of barren, but it's not got the kind of crazy sort of um, wild like changing magics that are sort of infused into the auric waste themselves. Um, like it's definitely it was formed by a magical sort of uh, act. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see on the map, there's that little kind of tower icon at the bottom there. Oh, yes. Um, in my head, I mean, again, this isn't, it's not a secret. I'm not like holding back law or anything. <laughs> in my head, like this is sort of prior to the current age was, um, it was the, sort of the age of arcane might, I think I've called it. Just like mm -hmm. there was a lot of kind of, there's a lot of sort of irresponsible magic use going on. And over the course of several thousand years, you know, uh, the, the wastes were formed by magical cat catastrophes and that. And this rift was formed when it, the sort of the sort of tale I've got in my head is that uh, what is now the Amethyst Isles used to be attached to the continent and was its own sort of little kind of mini nation. And they were at war with... Uh, well, at least had a major disagreement with <laughs> the um, the wizards who lived in that tower who decided to just like, no, we will we'll burn out all of our acolytes' um, minds to create a massive blast of magical energy to just take them off the map once and for all. And it didn't 100% okay. work, but it basically carved out this rift valley and cracked up the... The, um, the land into well a lot of the land kind of sank into the sea and so instead of this peninsula you've now got this um you now got the amethyst isles mm -hmm. um which is also kind of the that that um attack is the reason why the land on the amethyst isles is kind of infused with the sort of magical energy and why you get the sort of magical amethyst which i think we kind of had maybe talked about once before mm -hmm. so uh, there, i have got some thinking as to like <laughs> these things are kind of connected together a little bit well, I no. think in a roundabout way, you did just describe how the rift came to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I knew how the rift came to be. I just didn't have a name for it. It's so a long way, long way around of saying, I know exactly how it happened, how it, what happened to that, but I don't know what to call it. <laughs> I'm just laughing because it's kind of like I've, I've kind of gone, well, we could sort of describe the inhospitable region. You're like, oh, no, I've, I've got the description. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> we could do. There I just go. I haven't written it down. That's all. <laughs> um I mean, I, for the inhospitable region, I was thinking of maybe starting an auric waste article, though. Okay. Because it's it like the rift. It, the rift is more of like a sort of. I mean, it's it's still a large area, but um, I'd call it more of a sort of oddity and sort of. It. I wouldn't call it a full region, if you know what I mean. Region has this mm -hmm. connotation of like this sort of quite large, sort of almost, you know, I mean, it does take up half the landmass of the country, basically. The waste do. Oh yeah. So yeah. That kind of. That that says region to me. It's the eastern sort of you know thing. The rift itself, I would I would call like you know sort it's of, a suburb of the region. Yeah, <laughs> it's on the outskirts. You got to commute to the region from it. It's the rough part of town. <laughs> yeah. Um, so maybe hold, maybe we'll hold off on on doing the article on the inhospitable thing based just on the rift. But mm -hmm. um, I mean the rift you rift you does. Fill the fill the thing of the um, a settlement infamous or famous for its industrial activities. We also connected to that. Um, we could do the article write about material which is extracted, mined, or quarried from the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so it's sort of like in review. The conditions are like this: people come here to mine this thing, and then you know, there's that article. I'm trying to remember if we put a finger on that again. I don't think we did in terms of like actually hammering out exactly what it was they mined. 
No, I think, yeah, I think, again, I've we might have said... recollection of talking about maybe these were gemstones with the capacity to be charged with magical energy or something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's that's kind of what I was sort of thinking in mind in, in terms of, of of what they were kind of mining there. I think that's what we said before, but that's also sort of what I've been thinking is like, like the, the amethyst that come out of the ground in the amethyst style. So, but maybe, like, because it's so riffy is so much closer to the source of this magical blast that took him out. Maybe they were of a different kind of flavor sort of thing, Mm -hmm. a little bit more concentrated. Like the amethyst stars, amethyst are still good for magical purposes, but the ones from riff view where they're so much closer to the source, they're a bit more kind of potent, a bit more, I don't know. To put it into like Elder Scrolls parlance, it might be the difference between like you might get a lesser soul gem up in the Amethyst Isles, but you might get a grand one if you mine in Rift you. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's a that's a good way of looking at it. Um especially for those yeah. of us. I, mean, I think we've all played Skyrim at this point. <laughs> I, I think that everybody that's into this stuff knows their Elder Scrolls yeah. to some extent. <laughs> yeah. Damn it, Todd. <laughs> Well, he's raised us up so that we've all got ridiculous expectations now. We'll see if they can ever live up to them ever again. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, yeah, so that's kind of a good way of looking at it. Like you say, in Rift View, they mine the good stuff, but Mm -hmm. um, conditions are not good for the the workers. Okay, so let me just open a Word document. Um, We can actually type some of this down. Um, Okay, so Rift View, I mean, the... The kind of general sort of structure I've had, I mean, I've already kind of like barons have been mentioned and dukes and things. So I think we're pretty much in this land still in kind of a um, sort of a little bit of a that kind of system where there's sort of, I mean, there's a king and a queen, you know, there's dukes and that. Mm-hmm. So there's kind of little baronies here and there, you know, they all pay, pay fealty to the king and, that, and they're all part of the country, but they're kind of, it's a little bit of a feudal system still. So... I mean, it would, would, it, would we call it like, it would, do you think it'd be the Baron Baron of Rift View? Maybe? Would you, are you I thinking it's maybe yeah, somebody I, who's kind of bought his way into the. Uh, I into kind the of like gentry. the idea personally that you've got, because we've talked about a criminal undercurrent potentially in the region to some extent, mm. and that this is a part of the world that perhaps people wouldn't have wanted to go to at one point. That it was on, it's right on the edge of the Auric Waste, which it, is the dangerous, magically charged area. Yeah, yeah. You're not the going there on of holiday. People that are likely to take the risk of going there in the first place to even see if there's anything worth taking are going to be like nothing to lose type characters, mm. is my thought. So perhaps the founder of the town could be somebody that stumbled upon their riches as like, yeah, he was a bandit or a robber king or something along those lines who got chased out onto the edges of society and just into the edges of the auric wastes where nobody would want to go. Yeah. And while yeah. out there, he could have found like some of these gemstones, perhaps recognized the capacity or witnessed them being activated in some way, maybe. Mm. And then seeing the opportunity to like, seize the area for himself persuaded a bunch of his robber friends to come into the town and that's where you can then start out with like right so now we've got the guys that are the thuggish types to set the kind of ground rules of the place and they can start putting the lines out into the greater world to be like oh yeah come here get your riches get your riches and while they're sitting there getting fat and wealthy off the back of their trick as it were yeah i um i was kind of thinking I, I, I like all that. I was kind of thinking, though, um, not to discount any of it, the the sort of the legitimacy side of things, like you couldn't really get away with that sort of thing for too long, well, I'm, really. I'm, in, in that respect, you could argue, well, not argue, but hypothetically, either the baron, the robber baron himself or somebody within his crew is a mage who can harness the power of these gemstones well mm. enough that should anybody roll up, he can at least give the impression, perhaps, whether there's any truth to it, he can give the impression that he could unleash a magical storm upon people and really make them regret coming at him. So he would then present the lords and ladies or whoever it is that he needs to sell these gemstones to, the, the mages of the land, present the offer of Okay, we're at an impasse. You can either 
take my offer. Like you can let me do business. I'm not going to leave this place. I want to, I want to be in charge here, but I'm never going to give up this mine full of gemstones you want. So we can have a big fight and you can see how that goes if you like, or we can just, I can sell you the gemstones and you can let me do what I do here and you can do whatever you do out there. We can leave each other like that. And I feel like that's the kind of cloying criminality that slips through the cracks sometimes. I don't know what you make of that. Um, yeah, I, I was, yeah. Um, I'm kind of thinking maybe that it's sort of, it, it's a little less antagonistic with the, um, the kind of the other, the rest of the world at whole. Like maybe he's kind of the, the sort of the criminality side of things, like you say, is kind of it's kind of kept quiet from people who come there. You know, people who come there looking for riches don't. You know, they don't realize till it's too late that it's you know they're not going to get rich there. But mm -hmm. I'm thinking that that whole kind of facade is also part of this guy's kind of deal. Like maybe he presents kind of like a, you know, oh, you know, not like fully kind of like embarrassingly, you know, <laughs> fawning over the king or whatever. But he sort of presents this kind of sort of face of like, oh no, I'm respectable, sort of thing. Mm. But, Part of the establishment, but in his heart, he's really not. Yeah, yeah. But he but behind closed doors, he is just a sort of like you say a robber baron kind of thug sort of thing. But he has got that kind of maybe he was like the last son of a of a baron that owned the land, um, and. Um, like he wasn't a particularly great sort of, <laughs> he wasn't the ideal son, if that, if you know what I mean, but he was mm, the last sheep son. of the family. Kind yeah. Of yeah. Deal. Um, the rest of them, maybe the rest of them died in a, oh, we can tie it back. The rest of them died in the demon war. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> History. <laughs> um, and the, you know, prior to around about that time, like, Riffview wasn't really a going thing. It was just kind of like, hey, this is our crappy little village in the mountains that we happen to be the... That happens to be the last part of our... You know, maybe our lands were once a bit wider and that, but we're sort mm -hmm. of... Our, <laughs> our manor is up in the mountains and Riffview, it's a nice view. That's why, you know, back when the family was a bit more wealthy, they, they built it there as like, this is our mountain getaway. And like their lands have just sort of slowly shrunk through bad business deals and whatnot. And mm -hmm. um, then maybe right after, maybe, maybe these, these gems are a fairly new discovery. As in like, after the, after this guy, oh, now I've got to wait it. Ah, fuck it, whatever. I have a phone, guys. A lot of us do. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll put that on silent. Um, maybe, the, the gemstone discovery was like fairly recent, you know, hence why there's this kind of not, you know, sort of gold rush type thing of people coming in. So, mm -hmm. you know, he was, he was the youngest son. He was like a bit of a sort of black sheep, like you say, fell in with a bad crowd. So his closest friends are a bad crowd. Then he in inherited the keys to the barony and was, a you know, around about the same time that some, roving prospector <laughs> found these gems and you know in the barony and he's just seized upon this opportunity to like no now we're going to make some cash but mm -hmm. to stop the crown coming down on us we can't at least for all intents and purposes look like a criminal venture but we are going to make some cash and some people are going to get you know the short end of the stick on it that that's more sort of okay you know, what, what do you make of that no, it sounds good. Like, it, I mean, taking the thought, like, not not further, but like, just playing around with it. But the the idea of like, this is the black sheep of the family. Perhaps it's like, okay, he was the rough kid in an aristocratic family, mm. and he ended up going off, not necessarily adventuring, but just sort of like gallivanting, as yeah, it were. Yeah, and perhaps ended up in Riftview, which, as you said, was like, perhaps it was a place that was a nice place to live once upon a time. And then the wastes have crept in and it's become like, okay, yeah, there's maybe like a small cluster of houses and a small number of people that somehow eke out a living here. Mm. Whenever this guy turned up in town, perhaps he having come from like aristocracy and having been told you'll never amount to anything and all that kind of stuff would arrive there and maybe be the one to see potential. 
maybe could like rather than there being a prospect and maybe because he is noble blood and maybe he's he's had some level of education maybe he can recognize something in the land itself to say well nobody else would ever want to live here but here i am the outcast and here's this place falling apart maybe mm. i can pull it together i kind of like the Whether idea it's a benefit or not uh i, I mean, kind of like the idea that he um like the the family sort of this, like I say, this was already their land sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe the actual kind of town village part of it has sprung up as as a result of this boom as opposed to, you know, like... I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking, like, it's sort of like not a full castle, but they had the sort of the manor in the mountain sort of thing. Mm. And then it was like found... Like of some sort. Yeah, yeah, and these um, gems were found on the land around the keep and then you know he saw the business opportunity in that once the you know the sort of the powers you know the potential was revealed so he was like okay well no let's get some people in we can make some cash off of this we're strapped for mm. cash you know sort of thing so rather than it being like a, a village that he's come to and gone I'm going to build this up it was sort of almost like his family his you know the last vestige of his family's fortune and like their last big house was already there and stroke of luck for this guy, they found this, you know, <laughs> better found Yeah, no, I crystals. quite like that. And it, yeah. it, it takes, I can see potential for the, um, for the, where we've got town uh, infamous or famous for its industry. It would be both in this instance, potentially. Hmm. The, the way, now that we've built up this character of, of the Baron and his perspective, perhaps, he is aristocratic blood. So his perspective of, I am providing jobs for people. I am building this place up. This is what I'm doing here. From the perspective of the people that have been told they can come to town and make money and then find out the hard way, well, that's just the nature of the game. You're at the bottom of the chain. So, of course, some people win and some people lose. But from mm. his perspective, he's running it as he needs to. Yeah, yeah. And he's not going to give up a penny more than he needs to in, in, mm. uh, in profits and that. And then whether um, or not there, there would be any truth to that would be, I think, in the moment of, like, if, say, you were going to play in this setting, it would be like, well, it's up to you whether or not the guy's actually mm. like, doing what's necessary, or if maybe you can find out a bit more information about, like, he's skimming some cream off the top, as it were. That yeah, kind of yeah. Um, in terms of our timeline that I'm thinking of, the, um, the Demon War is meant to be, I think it's meant to be 60 years previously. Let me bring up my timeline. Um because I'm just thinking sort of in in terms of where this guy is. So the end of the Demon War in, in my in our <laughs> timeline was 1247. Our current date is 1307. So that's 60 years gap. Mm -hmm. So I think that's too much of a gap really for this guy to have been around. Maybe, hmm. I think it, maybe he is a, just over 60. Mm -hmm. And his maybe he had a, a, an older brother, um, who and his father were sort of they were the you know they were the stereotypical like quite heroic sort of good mind for you know you know they they, they were good people <laughs> <laughs> sort of thing. Um, his his father was killed in the war, so his older brother became head of the household while he was still a child. But his older brother had no mind for business and no mind for money and fell into difficulties in that. You know, rebuilding after the war was more costly in that, so they had to sell more and more land to pay for it. And eventually his brother um, passed away, leaving him this, you know, uh, this land. Maybe, you know, maybe he never thought he would inherit it sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um but by the time he did inherit it, the the um the sort of he wasn't left with much, and it's sort of like a sort of okay now. Well, I've been left with this crap, but I've got to come back from my, you know, maybe he was away, you know, living in the capital or something, mm -hmm. living a life of sort of debauchery <laughs> or whatever, and had sort of recalled and sort of has made the best of it. But it, and it, but as a result of this life of, you know, falling in with a bad crowd and. And whatnot. He's his sort of his closest contacts are not very nice people, and he himself really isn't a very nice person. Mm -hmm. 
So he's got no compunctions about, oh, hey, we suddenly have one of the most expensive resources in the world sat right under my land. Of course I'm going to make money off of it. Kind of thing. Yeah, it sounds, makes sense to me, and it all sounds like it's a, a yeah. good setting for somebody else to play around. So he's been, he, he's been sat on this mine now making cash for the last 20 years sort of thing. You know, that that's kind of the, the scale of it. Mm-hmm. Hence why there's still this kind of boom. Because people do come in and that, and um, they do kind of they, they they do come away with some money. Maybe there's you know the traders are the ones making money. Yeah, it, it's the kind of place where if you were like sensible with your behaviour and not getting caught up in whatever gambling or whatever might be going on in town, like classically miners and mining towns tend to run with like prostitution, drugs, and booze and gambling. Like that's kind of how they get by because yeah. you work hard, you play hard, kind of deal. This is a bit of a Deadwood style town. <laughs> yeah. So perhaps if you come in and you've got a little bit more of a noble soul, as it were, and you can spend your nights mm. reading your Bible yeah. for instead of going to the brothel, then you might be able to get out with that money that was promised. Yeah. You might make some money, but you know, you might not last too long in terms of like the social surroundings. But you can get in, make a little bit of cash, and get out. Sort of thing. Mm, the type to be complaining in a bar and making it infamous that oh that's a place that you it'll take your life. They're the ones that would get caught up in the drinking and carousing and all the rest of it, and they're mm. they're the ones equally so to come out of it complaining, not recognizing their part in it all. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay, so that's a good. Or that, yeah, we've got enough there. I think I can kind of build on for that the actual place itself. Mm-hmm. I've got some quite strong images in my mind. Hopefully our listeners do as well of this sort of mounted, like I'm thinking like buildings are kind of like sort of, there's no flat area that this is on, you know, the houses and that are kind of built sort of almost into the sort of, there's a lot of shacks and things and they're sort of on the side of the mountain and that, and there's this big sort of manor house that's still standing as the main sort of focus of the town. Mm. kind of thing lots, yeah. of, lots of dusty old wooden walkways to kind of deal with the fact that the, the ground's very uneven and certain buildings are up on like ledges that kind of thing perhaps. Mm. yeah yeah and it's you know it's it's quite you know it's an interesting looking place in that but like it's it's really not a nice place to be in um but there's a few different mine shafts in that and they all kind of like <laughs> sort of there's the eastern face mine and so, you know this kind of thing i think i can build on on that quite well um, what are we going to call this uh, this material then? Because I don't want to just call it gems. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I'll come up with a good good name for it now. Yeah. Um, I mean, is it a gem? Is it like a, an infused sort of mineral? I, I don't. I, I'm very conscious of the fact there's a lot of gems in our world. <laughs> hmm. um, well, what comes out of the amethyst styles are presumably what are they actually amethysts? Yeah, they or, are, but they're kind of, but they're sort of saturated. But they're magically yeah. charged ones. Yeah, yeah. So rather than it being the same thing, maybe this is more of a mineral that is, you mm. know, it's so it's sort of, you know, this can be worked and retains this huge magical charge so it is more of a mineral rather than like here's a gem to stick on the end of your staff this is more like i am making a really great magical staff let's make it out of this metal Mm -hmm. sort of thing maybe something like black silver oh that's interesting so something that's like my mind the main thing that's sort of like breeding the thought is like take something that's traditionally one thing like a color like an emerald or something and then just have it inexplicably be a different color yeah yeah no i like that yeah, that's good <laughs> like it, something works is like well it's still recognizably like you would you would still be able to like say it was an emerald you would be able to like look at it through light and see facets of green and that it is an emerald but there would be some like a black smoke inside of it or some some element to yeah, it that yeah. makes it very clearly look like oh no there's there's something inside of this gem and obviously it's a gem so how can that be hmm I like the idea. I'm not sure if black is the one to go for for that, but I like the sort of. See, in my head, I'm kind of thinking like if it's if it's magical, it's maybe got a little bit of an iridescence to it and that. Um, mm-hmm. So maybe kind of um, what do we call it? I don't want to just go with it. Iridescent silver. It's just you know that doesn't sound. Mm-hmm. That's not, that's bad SEO. That's not a good brand name, you know. <laughs> but um, maybe go for something that would like gleaming coal. 
Gleaming coal. Hmm. Something where it sounds like this would be a very low, and it would normally be a very low value kind of, yeah, that's coal. Hmm. But this coal shines, and coal don't do that. Yeah. Um, shining iron. Something like that. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe silver is a good one to go for. Shimmer silver. Yeah. it's It's got some kind of, like, a, a sparkle to it. Yeah. More than just the normal shimmer and shine of uh, a, a metal, it's got some kind of... It could look like it's wet all the time. Something like that, maybe? Yeah, yeah, like it's... I'm just trying to think of, like, what a good, like... What would be super, the visual cue of, sweaty like... sweaty silver, yeah. You, you're the miner, let's say. There's, like, you know what you're looking for, and then you see that, and there's some element of it that's like, what on earth is that? Hmm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um... Yeah, I, I, well, I, I, should we just call it Shimmer Silver for now, maybe? Yeah, that works yeah, for yeah. me. I mean, it's your world, so I'm just happy yeah, to have yeah, to. No, if no, if no, I no. say something that you like, then jump on it. Or if I don't, if you don't like it, then just say no. Yeah. Uh, um, again, I, I like black silver and that, but it's kind of like, like in terms of sort of vibe of this stuff. I want it, to, like I said, the, the the kind of the enterprise to get it out of the ground is a little bit seedy. Mm -hmm. um, but the actual material itself has legitimate kind of magical properties and uh, the kind of iridescent sort of thing. Like the black silver sort of has a kind of connotation, I think, of um, sort of a little bit kind of dark magic -y, if you know what I mean, which is not mm -hmm. necessarily what I want to go for, I think, yeah, with this. Yeah. I know what you mean, um, black black soldier and black silver. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> um. It, yeah, just in just in terms oh, of, sort I'm just of trying flavoring, to think of good, really. like what, what, what's a good adjective one that I've not heard attached to something already <laughs> in in some other game, yeah, or yeah, some I, setting or something. Like. I'm, I'm very um, yeah, with shimmer silver, I'm very I like my my brain is going shimmer silk, but I don't know what that's from. Um, shimmer silk, yeah. So maybe not shimmer. I don't want to be googling adjectives on the podcast, but I think I'm very close to doing that. <laughs> When you say shimmer silk, and my mind goes to the bit in Final Fantasy VII when Cloud's got to make the dress for himself. That might be where I'm going to. <laughs> and he's, 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 one of them is satin that shimmers, and one of them... Like, I can't remember exactly what the adjectives were that were attached, but that's for some reason, that's what's attached to that in my head. Yeah, yeah. Um... Hmm. Well, how much of, like... I mean, if it's amethysts on the island and it was connected to the landmass, I feel like there needs to be some, it, it needs to be a gemstone, a precious stone of some sort, but perhaps a very low value one that's quite easy to get hold of so that it would be something that the industry wouldn't be there for otherwise. Hmm. I mean, possibly, I'm thinking, like, well, I'm thinking like, maybe what, it's more that this, the, the, what was there already got infused more than mm -hmm. anything else. Hence why I was sort of leaning towards this, this kind of, um, more, more of like a, more of an ore, more of a mineral, rather than, you know, there were already amethysts on the isles. They just got, you know, they got infused with the magical energy, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, now I'm just testing my knowledge of minerals to be <laughs> 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 internally, just like, hmm, do I know the conditions under which some of these are created, and would that make sense with the region? <laughs> I mean, fluorite comes to mind, or uh, floor spa. Oh, maybe Straight we away, we call it glow spa. Hmm. Yeah. Because I mean, that's a very visually impressive looking mineral as it is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot like you know, kind of like feldspar, except it just already, it's it's just glowing. You get it out of the ground; yeah. it's exposed to light. It, oh, yeah, yeah. So it, it, there you go. It, it's um, <laughs> <laughs> it takes in the the so the sun's energy, and then when it's worked into a into a metal. It doesn't do that quite so visually, but it takes in the energy and it holds it. Mm -hmm. Yep, I like that. Yeah, That's, that sounds like we've hit the nail on the head there. <laughs> there we go, glow spa. We'll call it glow spa. <laughs> I was on thesaurus dot com for um, shimmer, <laughs> but um, I like it. I like it. Okay, well that's kind of two two connected ones <clears throat> articles. Sorry, rocketing through these. Trying to ignore the fact I've then got to write an article after we finish recording. 
Um, <laughs> so, um, sorry, I'm just taking a sip of drink there. Yeah, I'm just Keeping flicking it super through the rest of the, uh, <laughs> flicking through the rest of the things and trying to decide. Like, there's a couple that are tempting, like uh, coming up with an idiom, but idioms require like they they have to sound like they have a purpose. Yeah, I think we'd need to put um, that would require a bit more prep work than we can maybe just off the cuff it um, for this. <laughs> well, actually, okay, maybe if we're, we're staying in that area, there's right about a constructed or natural landmark. We could write about the rift tower, mm -hmm. um, you know, that sort of caused the rift, because um, I haven't got a name for that. Okay. So that, Well, you described the event as being like, so this was a mage who wanted to destroy the mines nearby. Uh, well, no, it was more that uh, what I was thinking was that it was sort of like this was kind of, this kind of um, this this sort of era of history on the on the in the area was that I mean there were sort of nominally kind of small countries and things, but it was a little bit less kind of a, a little bit less sort of controlled than that, and kind of magic ruled the day sort of thing. So mm -hmm. you had these sort of collections of um of magic users or even indeed like super powerful like individual guys who would just kind of you know they just rule various areas you know as they did and they would battle between each other and and things and i had this kind of idea that the whether it was a group or whether it was like an individually like really powerful guy who was in charge of this that who that this was his power this was his seat of power mm -hmm. had um was at war with the uh, um, the mages, that, well, or just the the people on the what was what <laughs> what was a peninsula now became the Amethyst Isles. Um, in fact, I have actually already got a small article there about some ruins at the top of the Amethyst Isles. Um, hmm. The ruins of Solara. Yeah, they were ruined in this attack. Um, so I'm thinking like his um so his tower was kind of you know, that was his focal point and it just his I don't know I don't know really what the act was that sort of kicked it off, but he just decided I've had enough of them up there in Solara. I will just mm -hmm. wipe them from the map, sort of thing. Um maybe there was a miscalculation, um or maybe he just was like, oh, I don't care. There's just carve out the land in front of my tower <laughs> sort of what thing. Do you think, what do you think about the idea that the tower was built specifically for the attack? Oh, yeah, it could do. Yeah, yeah. The, and that, that could perhaps inspire the name for it. Mm. Because if it was built specifically for it and perhaps the it was a vantage point that he needed to be able to, like, I need to be able to see this whole land in front of me to be able to, like, unleash this power that I want to. Yeah, yeah. That's, I like that quite well, actually. Like, it was specifically, you know, this is the focal point, you know, we'll gather on the top. Um, mm. I've got, like I say, I've got in mind kind of like a ritual where there was, like, you gathered a lot of sort of talented but, like, lesser, you know, at least in the pecking order, sort of mages and was like, right, we will take all your power and we will really mess up the land up there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they all just kind of were burned out in the process sort of thing. Um Okay, okay. So, yeah, I like that actually, but it's it's kind of I'm thinking probably not like full on like Tower of Sauron Bar Baradur sort of <laughs> height. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah. No, I'm trying to think of a good name for it on that basis, but without yeah, obviously we've not fleshed out the idea of exactly who did this. No, and exactly. I don't have a name or anything, but uh, just the vague idea of like what was on the you know the Amethyst Isles was maybe a small kind of small nation. Which was at war with this mage and his, or maybe not even a singular mage. Maybe it was like a, you know, at war with this group of mages or the small nation that was maybe it was a small nation that was in that area at mm -hmm. the time, and but was you know at the time everything was ruled over by mages. So their <laughs> their response to like their final act of the war was like, no, we will put you out of this war. We will shatter your land, mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um. 
Yeah, I'm just racking my brain. It's tough to think of a name, isn't it? Yeah. Good phrasing for it. Well, we can't put Rift in it because the Rift was called by it, caused by it. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm thinking along the lines of like Obliteration's Finger or or something like that. But that feels a little bit kind of arch and obviously (laughs) villainous in a way that like. Yeah. Want that if you'd like, we've we've not even talked about whether this guy was just in having done this potentially. The, the kind of vague thought in in my mind is that none of it was just. It was just like uh-huh. there's quite there's a lot of petty squabbling between small nations ruled over by probably quite a lot of sort of petty mages drunk on their own power, being like, how dare they? This imagine you know uh, you know reacting to imagine slights or real slights or whatever, but by and large, you know. It caused a lot of damage to the land, you know, as we mm. can see in our general kind of map, and that some of the lands recovered, some of it was like lucky to escape it, and that. But yeah, well, taking that thought, then, like again, like <laughs> this is kind of up to you in the moment to decide. But like the the majors' culture of that time period, would it be uh, like reasonable to think that perhaps they were quite ostentatious and quite up their asses, as it were? Oh yeah, and as yeah. such, he might well have called it something as just ridiculous as obliteration's finger, or I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to think of something that's better than that, but something along the lo- those lines of like Oculus something. I mean, I'm, I'm Latin words are always yeah, yeah. I mean, more our world, but it always works well in fantasy. Is throwing a bit of Latin in to well, give it a sense of like. Let, let's okay, think of this. Is- let's think of the maybe the, maybe the leader of this. Um, of the the group who caused it, what what was his name, and then we'll just call it the eye of him. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, names are well, tough. Got to think think further about. Just start slamming some syllables together. Um, exactly. That's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't, yeah, but it needs to sound kind of like quite grand and sort of. Um, oh my mind just goes to like historical things like Faust. Yeah, yeah. I love Faust as a name. It's just brilliant. <laughs> I am just totally looking around my room at various words that are on posters and things, and just putting them together. Um, uh, maybe. Um, yeah, again, without the, yeah, I tough. feel like if you, if you give me the surrounding, like here's the name of other people from that culture, that I can be like, all right. The, the the syllable rules that you're using here, like the kind of the sounds and what have you that are attached to that culture. Mm. Um, well, I'm kind of this is the thing is because we're talking about in a previous sort of era of the world sort of thing. Mm, that's it. It's it's tough. I'm kind of thinking it was probably a human. Um, I don't want to just go onto like a name generator or anything either because that's that's a bit of a cop out. Um, <laughs> Well, my, my, my naming schemes usually range from the slightly absurd Terry Pratchett-inspired <laughs> type of stuff, which is where, like, the, the village Potch... Like, Potch is... Yeah, is that's in a very, that, like, Pratchett-y really sort of... That word, that sound has a quality to it. Yeah. Sounds like or a connotation goes, for something, but, like, exactly. you, you're not quite sure what sort of thing. Mm. <laughs> but you know that it's kind of like, oh, it's nobody's going to be, like, Posh. In Potch. Yeah. Like, nobody's going to be up the run. Oh, no. So it's probably going to be a town full of people that are like farmers that are, I don't know, having a good old time or whatever. But on that basis, I'm just like, right. Because if you go for a vaguely like the, the cliches are all like, if we go for an Italian or French name, then it's probably going to be a carousing guy who is very much up his own ass, very ostentatious and what have you. Hmm. Same goes for maybe Spanish Mediterranean type names. There's a little bit more opportunity, like, or at least the the cliche is a bit more aggression with those kinds of names. Well, we we have already got our kind of fake France, um, which mm-hmm. I haven't really sort of fleshed out a lot, but that's it over in the over in the west, Ashala. Um, I'm thinking maybe something like uh, the the Eye of Alaris or something like that. That kind of mm. sort of slightly Latin sounding kind of um like you know tavius amius you know sort of you know yeah and part of me is like let's just find let's find a good word that would be like here's something that's got connotation and then translate it into latin to see what we get (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um I 
I also, okay, not to be putting a bunch of dead air into this then, so while we're kind of thinking, um, I kind of like the idea that maybe, like, we, we, we're going to we're gonna give it in this article, we're going to give this tower its given name, you know, like the eye of something or other, or, like, something's blade or whatever, you know, whatever it is. But maybe that name has been completely forgotten by history. <laughs> so a lot of people <laughs> just call it Rift Tower or something. Yeah, that would make sense. So they're just like, oh yeah, that It'd be tower, the kind of yeah. deal that like, yeah. If they, again, I, I like to think of about doing this in terms of, like if somebody wanted to play in the setting, what would the characters do there? Maybe hmm. learning the name of the place and what happened there would be the the kind of the deal. Yeah, as it were. yeah. So like, it's called kind of Rift Tower. It's like this big sort of ruin that people don't really go into because there are it's still a lot of kind of magical traps and things and that. And it is just this giant sort of like, okay, yeah, we don't go near that because it is basically in the wastes as well, and. Um, so everyone's like, you can see it. It's because it's big. So it's you know people know it's there and it's at the head of the rift. So it's just generally called Rift Tower. But it's it's been maybe fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred years since the actual event. So it's sort of you know a little bit kind of lost to history. It's like yeah, that tower's at the head of the rift. Maybe that's you know people's thoughts are just like okay. Most people don't think about it. Most people probably don't know about it. Historians and archaeologists um, maybe think it might be where. This, you know, the attack that caused the rift and shattered the amethyst isles originated from, but we don't know any more about it because everybody's pretty much afraid to go in there. You know, <laughs> yeah, like even mounting an expedition to get to it is a little bit of a, you know, a tricky proposition, at least for the amateurs. You know, there is um, on the map, I, you can see there is kind of a small road going by it, but even that road, you've got to go a little ways into the wastes just to get to the tower. So I'm thinking, I, I've been thinking a lot actually kind of about these roads and things that I have put through the waste. And I'm thinking that they, yeah, they're, they're a little more than kind of like a slightly more passable dirt track most of the time. Mm -hmm. And the, the yeah, only people sense, really... If, who, if nobody's frequenting it, then yeah, why would it be anything other than? The only people who really travel through the waste are quite heavily armed sort of military patrols or like military escorted sort of trade missions across to the Empire of Rivard and that. You know, there isn't a lot of casual traffic going this way. So organizing a trip to go out and just like, hey, we're going to go investigate that tower that is maybe five, ten miles in, into the waste. Yeah, you're going to need some talking to you know, get to it. Um, so it hasn't actually been explored very much. You know, mm -hmm. it would take it would take some legendary heroes to, <laughs> to go that do makes it. Sense. Yeah, yeah. I I, well, as we as you've been talking, I've just been playing around with a little translator, and um, Esperanto is available <laughs> on Google Translate. I like it. So I, I, I just tried. I don't know what you make of this. Uh, English to Esperanto: Blade's Edge becomes Larando de la Klingo. Okay. Um... I don't know if it, again very Mediterranean sounding. I'm just throwing it out yeah. there. It's like it depends on the quality the. The underlying quality of the language that you want. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if I want to go with Esperanto. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just playing around because it's kind of like I'm looking for sounds. I have been a little bit wary of like um, fully just like typing stuff into a translator and be like, we'll call it that because then, you know, <laughs> it's sort of like, well, someone's going to go, yeah, that's just like river in like Dutch or something like, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like, uh, on the on the map, we've got the Lifeblood River for Lifeblood River for a while. I was calling it something else. Um, I can't remember. I think I might. It, it was like I'd type Lifeblood into like translate into like Gaelic or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was calling it that, and then I was just like, eh, it kind of stands out as like a little odd. Um, it didn't really fit with. By that point, I was starting to layer in place names a bunch of which you know you you're given me and that, and it didn't really fit with them. So I just kind of changed it back to Lifeblood River because I figured like, hey, you know, people are going to be speaking common in this world. Mm -hmm. I mean, English, I'm, but, I'm thinking yeah. along the lines as well of like this place is. What does it say on the thing? Uh, one thousand three, one thousand five hundred to three thousand years old. So we, I mean, it's up to you, and I'll keep thinking mm. of things because yeah. I feel like it, sounding exotic compared to the other places might not necessarily be a bad thing if the name is truly forgotten and that's it's in a language that would sound very strange to everybody else. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Well, okay. Well, now let's. Uh, yeah, I, th I I quite like the eye of something as something as 
as a, as a sort of starting point because it's you know if if they're sort of casting it from the top maybe it is uh, plus it's quite a kind of yeah, can't even talk got the sort of subconscious sort of connotation of like hey in my head this is kind of looking a little bit like Sauron's tower with the eye at the top but mm-hmm. not quite as big but like they're calling it the eye because it's just like from here I can see my enemy and my enemy will blink and <laughs> I don't know you know um, well, perhaps um, just another thought the eye of contempt Oh, I like that, actually. In terms of, like, you, uh, I've given you your chance to bow before me, but you wouldn't, so now I must cast my contemptful gaze upon you. Hmm. Yeah, Boom, maybe, and then maybe... shatters, the, uh, yeah, yeah, shatters yeah, yeah. the region. Um, although now I'm thinking about the eye... I like the eye of contempt. It's really good. Um, what they called? I mean, the eye would maybe eye of contempt would maybe be like the like the upper area. That's what they're calling it. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's sort of like you don't really get many tower shaped eyes. Um, uh, maybe it would have like an elven name. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me just bring up my elven. I'm in. I'm in very much danger of just having it sound like a Tolkien place if I do this, but. Um, <laughs> Oh, Google doesn't do English to Elvish yet. I, mean, I am slightly surprised. Yeah, I'm a little annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I in uh, yeah, this is very quickly just going to sound like an Elvish place because I is hen. So then you end up with am and hen, which is the battle at the end of um, <laughs> at end of uh, fellowship. Uh, let's look at contempt. Um, contemptible. Um, mm-hmm. Condemnation? That would be another that one. The Eye of Condemnation. Yeah. Condemn. Yeah, this isn't a complete 100% dictionary. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, uh, yeah, okay. For now, I, I mean, we can play around with it, and that. I, I do like the Eye of Contempt, actually. Let, let, let's stick with Iron, Iron Contempt for now, so so we're not just okay. spending the whole podcast just coming up with names. Um, so yeah, it's 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 this kind of. I'm thinking it's huge, but like not like I mean, obviously I'm 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 trying kind of to avoid the Lord of the Rings direct one to one comparison. Um, mm-hmm. But it, it, it so it's not quite as tall as you know. Uh, Barad-dur or something, maybe kind of a bit more kind of like Isengard sort of size. Um, mm-hmm. So still big, still tall, you know, and it's it's stood the test of time, and it's sort of, but it's just kind of like sealed and, yeah, the, just sort of pretty much kind of like standing there, kind of abandoned. I mean, so how how tall is Isengard meant to be? I mean, you know, a couple of hundred meters maybe. That's that seems a lot, a couple of hundred feet at least. Well, it needs to be high enough to like look out over the land, and I do yeah, kind I of like the true. idea personally of like a wizard's tower should be something slightly absurd to the normal mind, where you would look at it and go, "How could anybody have built this?" Hmm. Especially, I, I guess that fits with the the kind of the historical age. I, I really do need to flesh a lot of this stuff out, really. <laughs> <At some point. laughs> but that's kind of what we're doing. Um, I like the idea that yeah, that this you know they're already doing crazy things with magic, like blowing up countries. Why wouldn't they just build a really tall building? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of just at, at that point, those mages would view that as just a part of operations. That's just mm. a logistical choice is to suddenly erect a tower. Yeah, they're like, okay, yeah, we need to build this tower so we can blow up those bastards up there in the, <laughs> on, the on the peninsula, and we need yeah. it to be tall enough so it can properly focus the beam. And I mean, win us the it, war. <laughs> it's taken the whole like the the culture and concepts of that time period a little bit further potentially. But I kind of like the idea of like, okay, so they didn't they didn't just magic the tower into being. Maybe the tower was built somewhere, and then they magic the tower to where it needed to be. Huh. That kind of a thing of like, yeah, yeah the, the greatest craftsman in the world did build it, and it did take a hundred years on the other side of the world. And then one day we did the ritual and we put it where we wanted it. Hmm. 
Yeah. And that that kind of plays into that, as you say, the era of arcane might. It should be a time where people are making these broad, crazy choices of like, wow, that took a hundred years (laughs) and this was part of a grand master plan that actually did pay off at some point. Hmm. Oh, so maybe actually, I actually, yeah, thinking about it, that might be quite funny actually. If maybe the you got these two, you know, say that the amethyst, if you still got the map open, mm-hmm. say that the amethyst isles were still attached to the the mainland, you got that mm-hmm. as a peninsula, and then over to the left, we got the other peninsula. That maybe they they were fighting across the bay. Mm-hmm. So their master plan was okay. We'll build the tower in secret. We'll, we'll they'll just think we're building another tower. You know, they're kind of right on, on their side of the peninsula and then nobody's even looking at the south. Yeah. So they magic it across from, like, well, where now sort of the kind of Duskwick area is. That's where they were building it. <laughs> and then it just got magicked across down to the where it now stands, used, and yeah. then they're like, well, we won. Cool, we'll just leave it there. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's saying it sounds like a... <laughs> Well, it's a fun idea as well, as much as it's one that would actually be like, no, there's there's genuine tactical thought behind that. Yeah, but like in ridiculous. Like, tactical maybe maybe thought. the the guys on up on what was the Amethyst Peninsula, let's call it. Yeah, they, they were kind of watching. Probably, I mean, I always like the idea again of like wizard scopes and things that are sight beyond sight, the ability mm. to like kind of know what the enemy's doing, and that they would sit there and be like, why are they building a tower there? And yeah. then kind of laughing to themselves <laughs> in that slightly pompous way that the cliche wizards do of like, huh. What a waste of resources in this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here we are with all our resources just waiting for them to come. And look, they're, they're thinking that we're going to come with them. No, no, we won't do that. Yeah. I don't. Uh, surprise, I think maybe it was a bit boom. quicker than 100 years. Like, maybe. The, well, I, I threw that out there. As oh, just, yeah, yeah. Like, like it being magic, like it did. You know, it, there was labor involved, but it was sped along by magic, so maybe it didn't take a huge amount of time to build. But yeah, like you say, like oh, look at these fools building their tower. You know, <laughs> they'd be better served propping up their magical defenses. And it's then... a complete side thought, but now that you've said it, just I, I'm kind of sold on the idea of like a, a builder's force that's being magically imbued. So there's like already worn out after a hard day of laboring so you go and see the cleric and he just puts you straight back up to full mm. strength again to go out and carry some more bricks i would think there would probably be a lot of magical constructs that are being animated to mm. construct things year you know 24 7 sort of thing you know you, it's maybe you overseen all the overseers are mages sort of thing but the the actual workforce is you know made out of sort of I don't, I, I don't know if these people are straying into necromancy probably that's still probably crossing a line because I feel oh, like that that's kind of like a that's like a sort of unspoken thing even back in that time of like okay we've had some trouble with necromancers raising giant armies of the dead can we all just agree maybe not to do that <laughs> it's a little bit creepy we all get like coffin dust on us and like yeah <laughs> <laughs> but we're totally fine making you know we'll, we will animate all this these we, we've got a lot of metal here let's make a crazy metal kind of golem man who will work non-stop to build my crazy tower which i will use to blow up your peninsula you know that's fine raising the dead that's crossing a line <laughs> oh, yeah. i like yeah, it i like it can't carry that much yeah yeah <laughs> so okay we're calling it the eye of contempt Mm-hmm. contempt and um i may like you say run that through a translator or whatever but we'll see how it goes um <laughs> I, 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 yeah it's kind of interesting it's a title anyway isn't it you know it's the eye of contempt we built it over here put it over there <laughs> um okay well that's three different prompts kind of filled in i think that's quite a lot for for one um one episode yeah, um, and that fits the bill. It's been fun thinking it out again. Mm, yeah. Well, uh, okay. So on previous uh, world building episodes, uh, I've kind of said, oh, you know, pitch me one thing. I didn't know if we were going to do that today. I figured because we're sort of focusing on the world anvil thing. Um, I wasn't going to focus so much on that. But if you've if you've got one, that'd be cool. But don't don't feel don't worry if you Ooh, haven't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You throw me for a loop. There yeah, for a don't worry. About oh, it. God, like, so we, squeezing we, my brain for. We didn't really uh, we didn't really discuss it before, and I, I was going into this assuming that we weren't going to be doing that this time around. So um, yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I think is there a quick one and would do any of these prompts is there a quick prompt I could quickly think up part of me is like I know that there's an idiom somewhere in my head that it would be perfect <laughs> for something that we've talked about something to do with like well that finding um... a gleaming and like some uh, th there's an idiom about a stone that gleam doesn't gleam in the dark but does gleam in the light something about that yeah Oh, don't worry there. about it. Don't worry about it. It's cool. <laughs> I kind of threw you under the bus there a little bit. <laughs> I'll rack my, I'll rack my brain. If there is one, I'll try, try and get it to you at some point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think we're going to call that there on the, this one. We are going to be back with uh, another world building episode in two weeks' time, uh, rounding out the month. I think the plan is to take the prompt uh, from Summer Camp of write about a conflict that shaped the political climate of your world. And uh, we're going to, I think, do that whole episode on that prompt because I want to talk about uh, the Demon War, which is something that we've kind of, we've referenced right back up to our first episode. Um, oh, yeah. Very as, important as, for Enethay. Yeah, yeah. Very important for Enethay. His, uh, his whole family, well, you would think. Uh, that's, uh, hang on. That sounds like I'm hinting something. I'm not. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing with just talking about anything, alluding to maybe yeah. the character we've not. <laughs> made part of the show yet is like uh, th this isn't necessarily leading to anything yeah, so yeah. please don't please don't, don't take any hints and be like, from... i can't wait for this <laughs> um but yeah so we, we've talked about the demon war like right from the beginning it's a, a thing i've had in mind it was this big conflict that happened about 60 years before our current sort of current date in our D, &D uh um adventures um and it's something i've got a few details of but i think it'd be good to kind of flesh out as like okay here's the definitive guide to the demon war so that's what we're going to talk about in two weeks time uh next week though we'll be back with our finale of our call of cthulhu story very mm -hmm. exciting we've been doing that all year and uh yeah yeah uh eden you're on that as well so that's uh, oh yeah brace brace yourselves people it's all escalating at this point <laughs> yeah. this is the, the the big finale it's been a slow burn up to this point but oh we are flying yeah the last two episodes you guys really stood on the accelerator i think a little bit and uh <laughs> yeah it's very nice. interesting um i hope you'll all enjoy it that, that'll be out next week which is thursday the uh what's that thursday the 18th that comes out so uh yeah stay tuned for that um anything else you want to add at all um you can find me on twitter at monkey magic eden if you're into video games at all i write reviews for a website called the digital fix which if you look at my twitter you'll find me linking those and if you have a read and pass them on if you like them that'd be really helpful of you yeah check it out uh and as usual you can find us on twitter and facebook uh both of which we're at pretend with dice uh so yeah and you can check out our world anvil page uh just by searching world anvil pretending with dice i think is that what you said it comes up as yep yep yeah, yeah. If, if you search that you will find your way mm, and you'll also find the articles linked from our uh twitter because i'm going to be as soon as i write these ones that we've come up with today i'm going to be putting them up um they might already be up by the time this episode goes up depends uh uh, depends how much stranger things I watch this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, cool. Okay, so we'll see you all next week. Uh, take it easy. Yeah, bye-bye.